one of the neat things about the Third World War game that you only really appreciate perhaps after a couple of plays is that with the forward movement concept, uh, the pre prior to the war, where you're rolling for each of these units uh, for the on the NATO side and adding three to a D6, that number is equal to or less than the proficiency rating. You're allowed to move that unit as a as a forward movement towards the front or wherever you deem uh, fit to enhance your defensive positions based on how the Soviets are set up. This does a couple of things. Obviously, it uh, allows for some variability because you never know which units will be activated. And you've got to roll for each unit first, one at a time, and then decide whether to move it or not and kind of go for it in that order. You can't roll for everyone and then decide who to move where. And so it may mean that you might move one unit from here to here, thinking that this guy will activate and you can move him somewhere, like up into Kiel. Uh, so in fact, this guy perhaps should have gone to Kiel, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but what that then does for the Soviets, based on how they have set themselves up for their turn, uh, that may change their plans a little bit. And as I look at this uh, situation today, for the beginning of this game, I'm thinking that uh, it would make a lot of sense to do an airborne assault into Kiel, capture it, drop a force in here, and then attempt with either the 20th Guard or 3rd Shock, you know, move our attack around and try and uh, maybe even try and land uh, an airborne infantry unit here and try and land, move some forces in and pocket this uh, set of sensibly three divisions there. Taking out those three divisions or keeping them isolated up here would be a huge benefit to uh, the Soviet effort. So that's the first thing we're going to think about trying to do with uh, Third Shock and I may even you know lay in some, some dudes from uh, 20th Guard there. The only challenge is I don't have a whole lot of forces available to do that. You know, as I've set up, I kept uh, only one or two units in towns. As you can see, there's none there. Uh, I can use the airborne, I guess. I can use these uh, these guys. And there's some Soviet airborne floating around here somewhere, and Polish as well. So there's the Poles. We'll use the Poles. And we'll have a go at it and see what happens. Now, down here... The, the U.S. and German forces put, a, just make sure I'm not knocking anything else, a lot of extra forces in here. And they've got one division set back and they were doing another division set back just uh, here. And so I, you know, obviously this is a reaction to how I had uh, set up these forces. The big punch coming here more than likely So uh, I've got one, one, two, I've got three guard, uh, three armies here, four if you include this. And we might say, well, what's going on in the south? Yeah, there's not a whole lot down there, is there? So, and, and, the, and the, you know, the NATO forces have reacted to that, right? They've, they've skinnied up the, the situation down here significantly. So that might create some opportunities for a, a vent of some type. We'll see. So that's the that's the current situation. We're going to allocate air superiority. What I'm going to do first is, uh, since turn one's important, uh, we're going to uh, sit down and have a look at where we want to place airstrikes and how much effort we want to put into deep strikes for turn one. And that will then drive what's available for the balance of the turn with the Soviets. All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon.